All right, let me know if you guys can hear me. Glad to hear it, Stuart. So can you guys hear me all right? Let me know. As soon as I know you can hear me, we are gonna we're gonna kick this off. You can hear me? Thank you, Joe. Loud and clear. Awesome. Awesome. I'm just gonna cut through to me. Hi. So I'm not gonna run the intro this week. Um because we're doing uh a LFL mini is what I'm calling it. So what is an LFL mini? Well, what it means is that I've been traveling and I just got back from Vegas last night. My flight was delayed and, uh, you know, got back kind of tired. So I've got something for you, but I was kind of like, oh, should I like cancel this week? And I was like, no, you know, we'll just get together and we'll just have a shorter one. So, um, which is what I'm calling it now, LFL Mini, because it's a mini one. Does that sound good to you guys? So we'll just do, you know, I've got a tutorial, quick tutorial I'm going to show you. And then maybe we'll look at some of your work. And so it's just going to be a little more low key this week. So I didn't send out any um, newsletters or announcements. So it's just kind of, we're just kind of gathering here for those of you who have showed up. And it looks like a few of you guys have come here. A lot of regulars. Good to see you all. And Stuart, I hope you feel better. Um, Kiora, um, with your uh, COVID. Sorry to hear you got that. Now, um, I'm fine. I'm healthy and everything. <laughs> right now, I'm just tired. Um, and if you, I was actually at WPPI, so it was at my first real um, event, uh, trade event, you know, a photography trade show, whatever. And it was great to catch up with a bunch of friends and everything like that. But if you guys have been being in Vegas, you know how it is, the dry air, your throat gets all jacked up and, you know, and late nights and, you know, you know how it is. I'm sure you all know how it is. All right. So good to see everybody kind of coming in, which is why, yeah, just being just kind of greeting you guys, you know, since we're here, more people kind of trickling in right now. So um, it was really good, though, um, you know, just to give you guys a, a recap, you know, like going back, it was really amazing, um, the trade show, because, you know, I basically went there just to see some friends, because it's a 40 minute flight, it's very close from here. And, you know, so I got to see Julianne and Jesus Ramirez and, you know, Christina Shirk and Lisa Carney and, you know, and other friends of mine, you know, in the industry, Pratik showed up. I don't know. You know, you guys probably know some of the Aaron Nace, of course, you know, so we got to hang out and just kind of, uh, you know, got to see my, my friends and some of them I hadn't seen in a long time. And it was just a really nice feeling like the trade show wasn't huge um but it was a really nice interaction because everybody was like their first show back and everybody was just really happy to see everyone so it was just really good time of just kind of hanging out you know haven't really done that in a long time so so that was kind of nice um you know too bad bruce wasn't with us this time yeah um you know because he's gone you know done many shows with me <laughs> many many of them over the years but all right guys so um looks like we've got got a few of us kind of coming in so what i figured i'm gonna do is i've got something for you so i did something interesting where's my camera yeah here it is so you guys can see here so i don't know you go on a trip right and you grab your gear and i was like okay i got my camera and i'm just gonna bring one lens i just want to travel light and easy and i wasn't even sure if i was gonna need it but you know i got a mic and stuff in case i want to do interviews and stuff so I thought I slept on my zoom lens. It's like, I don't know, an 18 to 105 or something. I was like, okay, I got my 18, 105, you know, it, it'll shoot whatever I want. And so what I've got here is actually going to be relevant with what we're going to teach. Um, so I got there and I was like, you know, I, I should take my camera out and shoot some pictures. So I pulled it out and guess which lens I traveled with. Um, I bought the 90 millimeter macro. Yeah. <laughs> so that was the lens I had. I was like, really? I bought my macro lens. So, um, you know, and it's actually kind of interesting. You can do some pretty good portraits and stuff with this macro, but you've either got to get really far away from things or really close to them if you want anything to work. So I thought, you know, I shot some different things. And let me switch over to the screen right now. So there's, there's a reason for this. Um, let me go to the screen. Here we go. So with the macro lens, this is why you know, we got this focus stacking is what we're going to be doing so here we are in Lightroom 
So I, I just kind of figured I wanted to go out and just kind of do some things. So I shot, you know, a bunch of different pictures. I mean, I could show you if you want, but it doesn't really matter. But so I was at the Caesar's Palace and they have, the, you know, these different statues outside. And I wanted to do a little bit of um, macro work. So if you look at this, I got a couple of shots here. Now, the thing about the, you know, the micro is a very, very, very shallow depth of field. So I'm able to get, see this top part here is nice and focused. Look at this. You can see this beautiful texture. Look at that. Nice and focused, nice and sharp, beautiful texture, but soft and blurry down there. So the depth of field gets very, very shallow when you're shooting like that. So say, for example, here, see the difference between the two there? Blurry, and now we've got it nice and sharp here. But then it gets blurry once it gets up the top. See how that gets out of focus. So that's one of the challenges when you're shooting any kind of uh, macro work is you want to kind of get those lined up. The other thing is, I, this was handheld. So if you look at it, see how they're not even perfectly lined up. I'm just standing there holding the camera, taking the shot. So what I want to do is I want to put these two together into one photograph. Now we can do this so easily in Photoshop. Uh, I, I know like... People can take a long time to do it by hand, masking and all this kind of stuff. So let's go ahead. So I've got the two photos selected here and I'm in Lightroom because these are raw files from the Sony A1. So these are 50 megapixel raw files. Uh, you could do this from camera raw too, of course. So I see I like this is nice and sharp there, soft here, you know, so just it's not getting the whole thing sharp, obviously. So I'm going to right click with these two selected and I'm going to choose edit in. But I want to go to Photoshop, but I, I know I'm going to combine the two of them into one document. So rather than opening them as separate images and then dragging the image over, we can do this directly by choosing to open as layers in Photoshop. So when we do that, we click open in layers. And then what it does is we can see here. Now it's just going to open up the two images, one on top of each other. Now, traditionally, this is what you would do. Let me just kind of show you this. So you can really appreciate what's going on. I'm just going to control J to hide this. So you could select the first one and then, you know, they need to align. So for start, they're not lined up. So I can't mask these. So what I would need to do is go into difference blend mode. Now it's interesting because I used to, by the way, here's a little tip for those of you who don't know it. I used to bring the opacity down and then try and line things up like that. That sort of works too, but if you go into a difference blend mode, it's so much easier to see the two layers and you can just kind of drag them on top of each other. And when they cancel each other out, it means it's perfectly aligned. Now, when you can't get them perfectly aligned here, like I can't here, sometimes you've got to control T and then just kind of rotate them around. I'm sure you guys have done this trick, you know, and maybe or maybe the camera was further apart, so you've got to change the size, so now I'm making it a little bit bigger. So, you know, and you're trying to line it up. Now you'll know this is perfectly lined up when everything turns black. So it's kind of this little thing, you know, you keep going like that, you're scaling, right? You're doing all these things. All right, so I'm, I'm not gonna do that whole process because I have a better way of doing that. But I just wanted to show you, okay, so we're starting to line things up now. So you go back to the normal blend mode and we go here. Okay, it's a little bit better. All right, but the challenge is, of course, you know, we get these little transparent bits around the edges. But then the next thing you would do is you would create a mask and then you would just start to mask it off. You would start to paint it out. So you're like, okay, where is it sharp underneath? Oh, it's sharper up here. So you go on there and then you would grab a black brush. Just and then you would paint over there, you know, on the black brush, trying to get an area that might be sharper. And uh, where are we at? 40% flow. Let's bring it up to 100% flow. There we go. And now you're starting to kind of get the texture from the other one. This is, this is essentially what we're going to be doing, but I'm going to show you how to automate all of this. All right. So then we go in here. No, nope, that's not good. Let's go with this one. So you start to figure out which parts of which image is in focus and you just kind of start to mask them together and definitely that's that's got better but let's undo all of that and then I'm just going to show you how easy it is to do this inside of Photoshop and if you just joined us welcome um, and hit that like button uh, it helps us with the YouTube algorithm and glad you guys could all join here 
Um, please turn the mic volume up. Can you guys not hear? Let me bring the mic a little closer to my mouth. I apologize. Is that better? Let me know if you can hear me better now. Uh, part of it might be to my voice. I'm not like yelling because it's uh, a little tired right now. All right. So what we're going to do now is we've got these two. So what we need to do is we need to align these. We need to mask them. And we need to get rid of the transparent edges to make everything nice. So let me show you. I'm just going to select them both. And then we're going to choose Edit. Auto Align Layers. Now, the Auto Align is going to come up. And I'm just going to use Auto. I'm not going to do anything else. I'm just going to click on Auto. There. And now if we look at this before and after, look at that. Now it's perfectly lined up. Now the bottom looks different because you can see this is blurry. So of course there's more of an edge. It expands the edges, you know, whereas when it's sharp, it brings them in tighter. So you can see part of the photo is sharp here, part of it's blurry, part of it's sharp here, part of it's blurry. So we've done the first step, we've aligned them. So now we can mask them. Now we need to mask them together, find all the sharp areas on each photo, put those together and look at these edges. So we need to either crop that or we need to do some kind of content aware fill. All right, let's go to the next step. We're going to choose edit. And we're going to choose to auto blend layers. Now auto blend is how you create panoramas in Photoshop, but also we can stack them. So we're going to turn on stacking and we're going to turn on content aware, transparent areas. So this is actually going to just automatically do all the masking and fill those edges for us. Watch this. Click OK. And we just give it a little, little moment here. Photoshop is thinking. And look at that. So it shows the selections around the areas that content aware filled. If that's a word, Control D turns that off. So we look, there's our image. Now it's created a new layer on top where it's got the sharp part from all the photos. And um, let's zoom in, see if we see the texture down here. And we go up the top here, the texture's nice up there. It looks like it. Did that mask that or is that just the way the screen is going because I zoomed in and out? That could could be a refresh or the content aware fill at the top. Okay, so that's that's fine. But you can kind of see how we can just do all of that. Now there we go. That was just a screen refresh issue. So there we go. So we were able to do that. Now I was only using two images. If I wanted to get every part of this photo perfectly sharp, then you just take more exposures and you just set the exposure for different parts of the image. So, you know, this is just, I just wanted to show you just how easy it is to do it, you know, just on a very, very simple photo. And in photo stacking, of course, you know, like some macro photographers will shoot a hundred or more photos to create something really big. But uh, yeah, that's essentially how that works. So um, let me know if you guys have any questions on that. Uh, if you find that useful, good to, good to see you all here, by the way. And Bruce is in the house. Alistair is in the house. We've got Susan. We've got Rod Shelley, Orca Pest, Ahana. Uh, good to see you, Zach. Multimedia, Chris, Philip, Susan, Kirsty, uh, Stuart, of course, and uh, Polka Dot Studio. I see you there, Greg. Um, so lots, lots of regulars. I, I figured that pretty much we're going to get the regulars in the house here. Rolf, good to see you, Alistair. Because, um, you know, this week is just a quick, um, we're just doing this just quick little tutorial here. Because I didn't I didn't want to just not do anything this week. I figured let's get together, uh, have our, our little hangout and do that. Now, one of the things I am going to cut through to now, though, is some of the images that you guys have posted in our group this week. Um, Bruce, if you have the link handy for our Facebook group, please uh, post that. And uh, if, if you don't, it's just go to Facebook and then it's a photo, Photoshop Cafe. Search for Photoshop Cafe and you'll see it's Photoshop Cafe um, Art and Challenges or something like that. You'll, you'll find it there. It's Photoshop Cafe and I will accept your um, request and then you guys can go in there. So this is the work that you guys have posted in the last week. So uh, let's have a look. Well, at least the ones I selected. So there we go. Bruce has put that link there in the chat. And so, Tony, I like what you've done here. You're... And I like the, you know, the, the mood here. You've got this nice rainy mood, but it's like a sun shower. It's nice and, and sunny as well. 
um, in the foreground and then we got some weather going on here um, that's just kind of a cool I, I think it's just kind of a cool effect it looks good all right let's move on Leo I like that I really like the composition in this it's really nice you're in a cave and we're looking out and um, and this is this is really neat and I guess we got this big massive moon um, or a ball or sphere because it, it is kind of in front of the trees but that's that's okay it's it's a nice concept here and uh, but the composition is really what I liked about this the lights and darks like really great use of contrast uh, so you know good job on the composition there all right Hana found this uh, steam car stock and I see you've got some camels there in the background and uh, here with the steam car the old uh, film camera safari kind of hat and everything is fun looks looks good uh, nice job there with this I think it's fun and uh, I, if you're there just say hi if I show your work and I see you there Tony all right so this one here Martina Caladine Martina Caladine if you're there uh, let us know I see you use virus effects optics there you use the uh, the HUD overlays I like what you did here is a kind of a Tetris effect that's pretty neat very clever I like that and uh, of course you know some stormtroopers you know Imperial stormtrooper love it um, yeah good it's kind of sci-fi composition it's kind of fun good job and Bonnie Bonnie are you here <laughs> love this um, composite let me get myself off the screen so you guys can actually see got the bear doing the painting and uh, you've got the uh, birds outside and everything like that nice nice composite and uh, yeah so I like that I like your colors too and the other thing I like about this too is your your textures your textures and colors are looking good all right and then uh, Russ I don't know if you're here playing around Photoshop and Luminar Neo how many of you actually uh, use Luminar? Let me know if you guys use that. Uh, someone's in Whangarei? Oh, Rosie, welcome. Welcome from Whangarei, Northland, New Zealand. Good to see you. Um, so, yeah, this is, this is just kind of fun playing chess with each other. And you know what I like is that, you know, the uh, the little animals here, you know, the, the black and white animals playing chess. And I don't know if that was planned, but, you know, the black and white chess pieces were kind of going with it. Um, so that's nice and then um, tuned up so this is Randy um, used to go by Randy tunes actually um, but I, I know that Randy's now doing a lot of these vehicles and so these are illustrations that he's doing so good like I love his illustration work look at that that really cool truck with the dinosaur love it kind of has a Jurassic Park but a little bit of humor going on there um, Orcapus uses uh, Luminar. So thank you, Randy, for sharing this. Um, always love seeing your illustration work. It's really good. And Dana, these textures are really cool. I love the detail in the textures and the nice color that you've got going on here. Um, you know, I just, it has a nice dimension to it because I see you've got some nice little shadows and stuff going on here. Um, it's clean, you know, it's nice, very clean, nice use of textures there that's something I could see printed out and uh, hanging in a, a lobby or in somebody's home you know would make a nice very nice print actually um, so thank you for sharing that and uh, yeah so you know as I was saying just a, a short session this week um, you know I just wanted to do something for you guys you know so we could you know get together so we wouldn't uh, you know skip all together so we're just doing just a quick 20 minute because you know as I was saying at the beginning here you know I was traveling and my flight was delayed got home late last night and you know just a little tired and my voice is kind of not very good because I've been in Vegas with the dry air and uh, you know and all the noise you're yelling and all that kind of stuff so um, just want to share that little tutorial if anyone got any questions you know drop a question there into the chat and um, you know, I'd be happy to take a stab at any questions you guys have. So I'll just give you a minute for that. And uh, and if no questions come up, then, uh, you know, I'll let you guys go home early this week. I hope you guys are okay with that. 
and uh, let me see where we are. And uh, yeah, what do we got here? Waiting, waiting, waiting. Thank you for doing a little something. It was good to see you here today. Well, thank you, William. Thank you for joining us. And uh, what do we got here? Thanks. Well, thanks for coming, guys. You know, I really appreciate that you were here. I haven't done a fix my photo in a while. I know, Zach. Um, maybe let me run the fix my photo intro just so I can do that. Let me, let me do a quick, so I can show you guys where to submit the photos for that. And maybe we'll do one of those really soon. Okay, so fix my photo is where I work on your guys' photos. And what you want to do is go to fixmyphoto.net. And then upload the photo there. Now, sometimes I hear from people, they say it doesn't, that link doesn't work. It should work because I've tested it works. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you need a Dropbox account or just a free Dropbox account for it to work. I'm not sure if anyone knows that. Let me know. But um, generally speaking, I don't ever, you know, it, it should work. And then what you can do is upload a photo, preferably a raw photo, but JPEG anything, you know, like the best the quality that you have. Um, and give us an unedited photo or a couple you can do a couple of photos uh, three actually is a maximum uh, per week so just you know send in three photos if you want or one or two put them up there and um, put your name in the file name and then you know I can select some pictures you know and uh, do some edits to them you know if they're Ones that are just kind of cool and maybe you want me to put them together into some kind of composite or apply some kind of an effect, we could do that. Or if there's a problem that maybe I could try to fix, um, you know, we can also do that. But the problem is if the photo has an issue that needs fixing, um, it's best to send the unedited photo because when, you know, if it's too compressed or whatever, things like that, it can get very difficult to try and uh, and fix a photo that's like got over compression or anything like that, which is why I'm saying raw files are great so anyway guys that's uh that's the fix the photo so hopefully we can get something going going there soon um so yeah let's see if we can incorporate that soon because it seems like you guys enjoy that and uh, you've missed it now as far as the you know the lfl because you know sometimes i do get some um oh i don't know I'm, I'm i'm not gonna use a word for it but i get comments like oh are you still in lockdown you know i saw one earlier today and well no i'm not um it's just a name <laughs> we started life from lockdown you know when everything went into lockdown so yeah we haven't got around to changing the name yet um and you know it's something at some point we're gonna do we will uh you know kind of change it up but for now it's um it's just a name and um you know it's a lot of work to change it you know you gotta come for a name you gotta create all the animations and all that kind of stuff and you know all that so um, but the name's just kind of stuck with us. So I don't know what you guys think. I've got some different ideas. I've been kind of kicking around for names. Uh, but I do know, you know, am I in lockdown? No, but, you know, some places are, um, you know, kind of come and go. But I believe it's starting to open up, you know, more in pretty much most of the world now. So anyway, so that's that's just the thing. I just want to throw that out there with that. Um, because, you know, pretty much every week, you know, when I post it, I get someone will make a comment. Are you still in lockdown? Um, and... The funny thing is they were saying that like two months ago when half the world was in lockdown. <laughs> but anyway, um, so what we got here, let's have a look what you guys got here. Here's our, let me bring the comments section onto the screen and let me go to the desktop here. All right, so here we are. Rod Shelley, it's good to get together, have a short. It's been a stressful week. Good. To, I'm glad um, that you were able to get there and you're welcome TR for the tip and same with Polkadot Studio. Uh, what do we got here? If you have an optics license, go to support download and download. Oh yeah. If you guys, um, thanks Klaus. Uh, yeah. So I know I did hear from some people and they said they was, had trouble with optics, Boris effects, optics, getting the update. So what you got to do is you go to the Boris effects website, log into your account there. And then under your account, it will show your support period. And if it's less than a year, you can download the uh, the new version for free. And if you have a subscription, you can also download it for free, but you're not going to update it through the app. You actually have to go into your account there and download it because Boris effects 2020, uh, not Boris effects optics 2022 
is a new install. So it's not it's not an update, it's an install. So just go to their website, download it, install it, and you should be good. So there we go. I didn't send out, Laurie, I didn't send out an email notice notification today. Um, so that's why you wouldn't have received one. Because I just wanted to do, that's why I called it a LFL mini, because it's just a, a mini kind of get together. Whoever kind of showed up, showed up. I wasn't doing this as an official LFL. So that's kind of why we did that. Bruce, the link does not work. Um, I don't know like why it works for some people and why it doesn't work for some people as far as that link for the uh, fix my photo i would su suggest like maybe try using a different web browser and let me tr um do you have a dropbox account because maybe i'm guessing it's because i'm using dropbox that if you don't have an account that you can't upload to it and you don't have to do a paid account just a free account maybe that's it i don't know you guys let me know if you're having issues with it Dana says LFL is fine. Rod Shelley, nothing simple anymore. I, I don't think anything ever was simple. <laughs> uh, Wayne, I can paste a vector file to Photoshop from Illustrator, but can I open an Illustrator file and keep the vector? Um, yes, if you, uh, Wayne, if you bring it in to Photoshop as a smart object, so, you know, drag and drop it into Photoshop as a smart object, and you double click that smart object from within Photoshop, it will launch Illustrator and enable you to edit that photo in Illustrator. And then when you hit save in Illustrator, it will update it back in Photoshop. So just work with a smart object and you can maintain that uh, that vector. Orcapus says LFL is cool. Chris likes keep LFL. Zach Multimedia, LFL is the name of the group, not the state of where people, not the state of what people are doing. Got it. Yeah. Um, okay, so some people do like LFL. LFL is an homage to 2021. LFL is legend. LFL is who we are. Uh, I do have a Dropbox account. Okay, so TR, I'm not sure um, what we can do with that. Um, send me, contact me through support. You know, just go to photoshopcafe.com. You'll see the support link and contact me there um, and, and we'll figure it out. Um Rod Shelley, hey, you know, we could change LFL to LOL. That's fine. Hey, he, you didn't say that, but I was just thinking that. <laughs> no worries. I hate it when I'm available. I miss this too, but I always catch a replay, which is nice. I'm glad you were able to join us live, Laurie. Um, good to have you with us. I have a Dropbox account, but not opening. Fix okay, so I don't know what's going on. Try a different browser. Um, so, wow, we're getting a lot of votes here for LFL. Interesting. Okay. So I, I figured, you know, we should at least get the t-shirt <laughs> before we change it. Didn't I say I was going to make a t-shirt? Like how long ago did I say I was going to make a t-shirt? About a year ago. Um, yeah, that's still on the to-do list. <laughs> um, Russell says, if they're using a PC, check the host file. Okay. So that's from Russell there. As a suggestion on the uh, Dropbox. You know what I'll do is I'll do some... I'll do some searching as well and if you guys have the answer let me know but i'll do a, a search on you know troubleshooting i'll maybe i'll contact you know that's what i'll do I'll, I'll contact the support for dropbox and i'll see if they have a um you know if this is a common issue or if there's a fix for that because it shouldn't you know it shouldn't be an issue because i can get there you know what i can do i've got an idea i'll give you i'll give me give you the direct link maybe that'll help hold on one sec because i've got that forwarding fixmyphoto.net and make sure um don't use capitalization that's another question here were you using capital any capitalization when you were typing that in because if you go to fixmyphoto.net yeah see this is what happens look that's what you should get so let me show you fix my photo.net don't do.com all lowercase Boom, you should get this and then you can add the files. Now, let me know because I think if you put the capitalization, it might not work. Watch it make me a liar. Watch it make a liar of me. Yeah, it still worked. Okay, so. Yeah, so I don't know. I mean, it, it works there. <laughs> um, Wayne, thanks, Colin. Premiere Pro take layers from Photoshop, but not from Illustrator. 
So it's wanting a workaround for Leo as a train dragon smart object. Okay, yeah. Um, the other thing you could do too, Wayne, is because some things from Illustrator, I thought they might work, but maybe what are you doing? You're taking them into Photoshop and then saving them as a PNG or a ping. Also, if you put them into the library, you can open the library inside of uh, Premiere Pro and drag out assets from the library too. Um, so you can grab those. Um, Hana has a different link for Fix My Photo that works, but I can't share it. The link YouTube will not allow. Um, yeah, because I, I think Bruce can post a link because he's a moderator. But let me get the actual Dropbox link because I think this is what you have. Okay, guys, so here's another link. That's the direct link. So try that. Um, and, and I'll just wait while you try it. For those of you who were not able to go to fixmyphoto.net, what happens if you click on that link? Does that work? Let me know. Link is working okay for me, but I have a Dropbox account. Okay. Yeah, because I'm trying to do this the easiest way, you know, because emailing, you know, is just not going to work because it's going to get lost. And I just feel like Dropbox was a perhaps the easiest way to do it. But uh, that's the one. Works for you. Yep, that one works. Okay. So I guess if... Um, if the LFL, okay, so if the uh, fixmyphoto.net doesn't work, click on that link. And as far as the replay, the replay will go live and I will post that link in the comment section of the replay. So if you're watching the replay, I'll make sure that that link is there and just use that for um, for posting. So um, I have Dropbox, we like server could not be found, clicking on Bruce's link. Okay, so try the other link. Um, for some reason, the URL forwarding is not working from your your browser. I don't know why that would be the case, but, you know, it's, it's strange, but that's what's happening. Yeah, that works fine. Other link doesn't work in Firefox or Chrome. So it gets, you know, it's weird. You know how the web is just weird these days, you know, like browsers are always changing security settings and whatnot maybe the security it might, I, I bet you there's a security setting that is blocking a forwarding url because it doesn't necessarily know where that url is forwarding to so it's probably that you know the other thing i could try is a bitly link um but you know there's the there's that full link there just go to that direct link and uh, and use that and we should be good and um, see what you guys submit so anyway um i think uh, I think we're going to call it. I think we're going to call that a day. And, um, you know, we've been here for, you know, just a shorter one, just a half hour one this week. Uh, it's been fun hanging out with you guys. Good to see you here. And, um, you know, we will be back next week for a full LFL. And, uh, yeah, until then, good to see you guys. Stay safe. And we will see you at the cafe. <laughs>